Sh uh, a weekend off last weekend, the uh, first chance perhaps for you to, to really put some work in the training round. How's it been? Yeah, I, I would say we've, we've probably had decent opportunity in the, uh, prior to that to, to work on the training ground. I think the difficult aspect was the number of games we had in a short space of time and the injuries we've been carrying. But last week was a good opportunity to get some work into the players that, that needed it. There was a few extra days to try and see if we can get one or two back on the pitch and, and, and get them recovering. Um, we did have a little bit of fallout from the Ross County game um, and some players that maybe completed the game but were carrying knocks and niggles and have been playing through one or two things. So, um, yeah, that was good. This week's been really good off the back of that as well. You know, just trying to build that game plan and that idea of what we want to do when we play against Rangers on Saturday. But that's been similar to what we've had, to be honest, in the four games previous. Um, really important to me that we're able to get a game plan to the players um, and I always think if you have that plan and the players really understand it then there's not too many excuses as to as to why you lose a game other than it can be an individual error it can be that you're playing against some serious quality which which we know we're going to face this this Saturday. Yeah, we get on to the Rangers game in a second but obviously since you've come in it's been such a brilliant start what's the aim for you and the team up until the split are you looking up rather than down at the moment or is it still purely Avoiding relegation. Trying to keep a good run going. Um, I think when you when you sit as confident as we have been and feeling good in the in the fashion that we have done, then you just look to the next game to see if you can make that five games undefeated. I think that's that that's as simple as we're making it. Um, we know that this is going to be a difficult period to be the with the games that you have coming up. But I think very simply, when when you're on on a good run and the players are performing well, you just look to keep building that momentum. And I think if we try and uh, muddy the waters by trying to make it too specific about how many points we need for certain games and all the rest of it. I think that that's when the, uh, the whole plan can be derailed. So I think it's just important that we try and get the same levels that we've had off the players in the, in the past four games. How excited are you for Saturday? And would you say it's your biggest test yet? Of course it is in terms of the opposition. Yeah, the, the team you're playing against, the quality, the investment, the... Um, the the manager, the level of coach, and everything like that is is, is top drawer. It's, it's it's exceptional. But I think that we have to believe in ourselves. We have to believe in the fact that we can play in our home patch now, and we can be we can be competitive, and we can make life really difficult for Rangers. So um, it will be a massive test. I think the players know that themselves. But I can see that there's a uh, it's one that whets the appetite. You know, you shouldn't be going in with any apprehension. Uh, I've said it long and hard that. I think this isn't our fight, you know, as a club like Motherwell, this isn't our fight, but it doesn't mean to say that you don't want to get involved in the game. I just mean longer term, as in trying to be really competitive week upon week with teams like Rangers and Celtic. You, you have no no real right as a club like Motherwell to do that, um, but I don't think that that means that you can't be really competitive in the game. Yeah, just finally from me, this is obviously the first time you're playing one of the, the big two. You say it's not really your fight. What, what can we expect from your Motherwell team when you come up against top two in this country. Are you going to change your approach from the previous games at all? I think potentially, again, what we have to choose from and the players that we'll have to select, I, I can see there being a slight change of approach as in what we're able to do. Um, I'm not going to go into the specifics of that just now, obviously, but I, I know, you know, looking at the personnel and what we have available, that will change ever so slightly. Um, but I don't think it mean, it doesn't mean that we can't be positive when we get possession of the ball, but I always think when you play against the big two, that there has to be a real mental toughness because you know at times that they can dominate the ball, you know that they can have long periods on the ball. And if you start to feel sorry for yourself and you start to switch off, then that's when that's when bad things happen to you. So I think that that's been a real clear message to us this week to um, to actually enjoy spells when you don't have the ball because I think that that can make you one difficult to play against, but I think it makes makes you uh, maximise the the opportunities you, you you get when you've when you've got the ball, so that you're in a game of football to the latter stages. Essentially, have we got quite a few unavailable then, Stuart? We've got a few guys that we've got concerns over. Yeah, um, again, prior to me coming in, some of these guys were carrying knocks and niggles. We had a few guys that hadn't played an awful lot of football. Um, we'll give them every opportunity to see if they're fit and ready to play on Saturday. Um, I'm hoping to have one or two back on the training pitch uh, today. But again, that's almost a test to see whether they're going to be durable, robust enough to play in the game on Saturday. But yeah, there are a few concerns over, over guys that played against Ross County. Can you give us any clear as to who they might be? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> right.
to the intermodal fight. Yeah, there's the, listen. There's guys that have the guys that have played minutes for me so far in in the past four games that have been struggling. So um, there's no point in making a secret of it. That's that that's the truth. But I'll not name names just now because one or two still have a chance of playing in the game on Saturday. And you're talking about potentially going you know, until the split undefeated. That you must have a belief at the moment with the way the team's playing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think. Um, you know, what, what, why would you not off the back of what we've done? It's not a time for us to sit here and feel sorry for ourselves and, you know, sit and be in, in disbelief about what's happened. So we, we have to grow on that. We have to enjoy it. Um, I keep speaking about when players come in uh, every morning, you're seeing that positive mindset. You're seeing the smiles and faces. I think we all know football well enough that you can go through bad runs. So it's important that you, you stay level-headed, you know, you stay on that kind of even keel. Um, but you should enjoy the little periods where you're playing well and you're picking up results. And I think when you do that, not getting too comfortable in that situation either and realising the, the hard work and hard yards that you've put in to get there. Um, and I suppose that's my job, of course, to, to make sure that the players are still applying themselves as they have done on the training pitch. But most importantly, when that, when that first whistle goes in a game day. A couple of days ago, Steve Clark named his squad for the upcoming year qualifiers. With regards to his keepers, he said it's everything to play for. Um, how do you think Liam would rise to the challenge if he got the nod to be number one? I'd have absolutely no doubt or, or hesitation that, that, that he would acquit himself really, really well. Didn't know Liam um, particularly well at all before coming to the football club, um, but everything that I've seen of him in terms of his performance, how he handles himself as a captain, but as a professional, um, is, is first class. So from my point of view, I think he'd be the type of lad that would relish that opportunity. But it's an interesting situation, isn't it? I know it's Steve's job, it's not, it's not my job to pick the number one for Scotland. Um, but I think with Craig Gordon being as good as he has been, <laughs> Guys would often go to those training camps and sort of realise who the main the, the main guy was and who the number one was. I think it just makes it an interesting situation. And as I say, we've got a guy here that's a massive influence that I'm sure will rise to that challenge. I mean, it's not as if he's a rookie. He's been around the ball quite a bit and he's, he's got the experience, just not at international level. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think that's what makes it interesting, isn't it? Because I don't think any of us know who will get that number one slot. Um, but just looking at the squad, looking at the guys that are involved, there's, there, there, there's three pretty good candidates there, isn't there? There's three pretty good goalkeepers there. Um, and I'm sure whoever's picked um, will have the full support of the other two. Um, but I also think that you've got someone that, that, that Scotland can rely on and I include Liam Kelly in that situation as well. Stuart, just going back to... The game. I mean, the, the atmosphere here towards the end of the Harps game was, you know, over in the stands was was pretty good. And after the game, having had a really difficult run at Fir Park, <coughs> seemed to have lifted completely. Is that important that you, you know, keep that going as long as you can, certainly, and get the fans behind you, and, and you know, you, they will have optimism going into this game because of your run to keep that to ride that kind of wave of optimism. Yeah, no, without a doubt, but I think it's important that we all realise this as well, that you know, no matter what happens when you play against a Rangers or a Celtic, it can't derail what happens in your season, and that's far from being defeated. We go into the game, and we want to, we want to try and win the game, especially in front of our home fans. Um, I think it's our job to try and acquit ourselves well uh, in, in terms of our performance, and I think in these types of games, if you do that, that's that, that, that that's a decent benchmark for, for your group and how you can handle playing against top players and top teams. Um, but like I say, whatever happens in the game on Saturday, we know that it's going to be a real tough task. Nobody will expect us to win this game. Nobody will expect us to get a point. Um, but I just think it's so important as a football club between fans, players, staff, that we still have that connection and we still stay together no matter what. Because again, like I say, I think you'll have nine games to play after Saturday. Um, there's a lot of football to play to be played but it can't derail what comes in the next game or the next nine games no matter what happens but I certainly hope and I certainly believe that we have a group capable of being competitive on Saturday and I think the Motherwell fans have shown you in, in recent weeks that if we show that and if we're able to pick up results and you know give them something to cheer about they will stick with us they will be with us because they've been a massive contributing factor even up in Dingwall you travel all the way up there um, well the game's nil nil they're still the group that you can hear they're still the people you can hear back in the side and that's so valuable valuable to, to, to us as a, a, a group of staff and a group of players. Bearing in mind your recent results, um, have you changed your strategy in this game, my players' mindset and what you're going to have to do to try and get something? 
I think, Peter, there's, a, there's always an aspect of how that game pads out. You know, I like to try and go in with a plan A, B, C, you know, depending on what happens in the game. You always speak about these games, trying to get through that opening 15, 20 minutes to make sure that you're, you've still got your clean sheet and then you look to try and progress. Um, but we know in football that these things can change. I think looking at Celtic against uh, Celtic against Hearts at the weekend in the Cup, you know, Hearts would have went in with that mindset that we have to be in the game, that we maybe go in the front foot and it was a blistering start wasn't it for Celtic so th those aspects I'm just trying to give you an example those aspects can happen and sometimes that can tweak and change your uh, your your mindset how you shape your team up the areas you want to play in so I keep speaking about being well versed it's so important that we know how we can react and how we respond in certain situations um, and, and from that point of view yeah the approach might be slightly different in the first in the early stages of this game as it may, as it was maybe against us at Mirren here or whatever um, but I think sometimes that just comes purely because it's a, a, a different opponent. Since you were a manager before and now in as Motherwell boss, a lot of people are suggesting it's, it's getting even more difficult to lay a glove on Celtic and Rangers. What's your view on that, <coughs> on that gap and how tough it is for anybody to try and get even minimum a point from them? I just think their standards and their levels are, are incredible. Um, I think one of the biggest differences that I've picked up when I spoke about this period of time that I've been out and you obviously analyse and you look at you, you look at all clubs, uh, I, I think that relentless, uh, relentless nature in games, um, I, I feel like maybe at times you've played against Rangers and Celtic in the past where they've been very, very good teams, they've, uh, they've been able to create chances against you, they've dominated the ball, a lot of the stuff that we still see I just feel that now there's a real intent and a real purpose to score a goal every single time you come forward. Um, maybe in the past, and again, this hasn't been dis disrespectful, it's just different managers, different uh, approaches to the game. I think at times they kept the ball off you and you felt that you could maybe kind of coast your way or coax your way through certain periods of games. Whereas now I feel that it is a relentless nature to go and score goals and put another one past you. And I think that that's because probably the... The, the gap, if you like, between the two clubs has, has got closer through a, a period of time as well where they're really pushing each other on. Rangers and Celtic are really pushing each other on. understand that Celtic have that, that lead at the top of the table, but you look at Rangers, they'll certainly not be coming and letting up in any way. They know that they have to go and try and make up ground because the demands of their football club is that you go and win every game and you try and make up ground on your biggest rival. So I think that that's maybe the type of situation scenario that's now driving that that ruthless nature that, that both clubs have. And is it not demoralising for the, the rest of the pack? No, I think you've got to enjoy it. I think that you, you have to try and put your marker down. You have to try and see if you can be the club that um, that can take points off them because I think we're seeing as the weeks go by that that's becoming fewer and far between. Um, but you want to be the next club that, that, that can do that. I, I referenced it. A, a situation I'd had previously at, at, at Ross County, taking them there. I think I spoke to yourself after the game, um, and and that had never been done before. So you're always looking for something that's a it's, it's a goal, maybe a milestone that hasn't either happened for a for a longer stretch or has never happened before. And and that's my motivation as a, as an individual. But I think for the players, you know, we've got guys that that maybe haven't played against Rangers. So how do you go and try and get a result against them? That's a big milestone in your career. And just as a slight aside, um, there's an alarming statistic coming out that there's less and less young Scottish players playing in the in the top flight here. Do you think that's a worrying trend that has to be addressed? Yes, yeah, I do, yeah, I do. But again, that's that, that's something that I've always believed in. Not just coming into to Motherwell um, or previous jobs. It's something I've been a huge believer in. Coming through an academy at Queens Park, where that promotion of young players uh, is is your fundamental. That's what that's what happens. That's what you have to look to do. Um, I've seen the stats myself, um, and and I would love to in some way see if either myself as a manager, but Motherwell as a football club can try and redress that in some way, even if it's for a for a small part um, but as you well know there's so much pressure on managers um, but I think when you've got those talented players that you believe in I personally don't think it's a difficult decision to make that's me um, but I would like to try and in some way and, and hopefully my coaching past and my managerial past tells you that I'm a guy that, that, that does that but again it has to be for the right reasons it has to be for players that are in a position where they can go and handle the emotions of playing in big games against Rangers and potentially being at the bottom end of the table and you need three points and you need the result. But I think that we have to get a balance between developing players and obviously the situation that you find yourself in, i.e. keeping a job. Managers keep saying that all the time, don't they? Oh, I need to keep my job. But sometimes 
I believe that young players can can help and aid in that in that situation as well. And Joe Efforts kind of return has been teased on social media. Is he? In contention for Saturday? No, he's still Joe, Joe's still a few weeks away. Although I'm really positive for the work that he's done with the medical guys, sports scientists over the last um, over the last two weeks, he's he's getting close to to been up to sort of top speed running. We just need to build up that that fitness level. Now he's working really hard. He's an excellent pro, Joe. Really good lad in terms of how he looks after himself. So um, no, he's getting close, but I'm I'm still saying it until we can get him into full sessions and maybe getting himself into. Some Sort of reserve games and get minutes on the park. We're probably looking at about two weeks. And Mikael Mandran, he... yeah, Mika returned to training Tuesday of this week. Um, had a bit of a virus off the back of his injury as well, so um, is shorter minutes in the pitch training wise. So um, we'll see how he goes today, tomorrow, and and see whether he can be part of that squad on Saturday. Blaney pushing as well. So, yeah. yeah, Shane's back up to speed as well. So he's another one that's um, that, that, that's getting on the pitch to train, um, just trying to top up and see if we can get him up to that full match speed.